Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Merchants of the Dark Road. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the Dark Road, everybody, where we are not mercantiling quite yet. Currently, we're over here in town, and what a bustling town it is, full of opportunities for us to buy low and sell high and make our fortunes as merchants. Eventually, we will face that Dark Road. Uh, but... Before we get to that, we have a bunch of setup to do. I am over here. I will be the first player. And as part of setup, every player gets their own wagon. Uh, three dice set to one, two, and three. This represents some of the first actions I will take on the town rondelle. Uh, everybody starts with a bit of cash. Everybody gets a horse. My horse is Whisper here, a fine steed, which gives me my own unique special power. A very shaggy horse. I'm quite fond of her. And I also have a passenger, good old Olvero, who would very much like to return to Windglass, his hometown. And uh, for signing on, he gave me a crystal, which is why I'm starting with a crystal. Most of the time, players don't. Although everybody does start with one horseshoe, which is a means you have to manipulate the dice. Also, I've got a secret goal. Everybody gets one. I'm going to get two points if I deliver three commissions over the course of the game to Night Poem, Curse Cairn, and Wind Glass. How fortunate. I'm planning on going to Wind Glass. That was a nice bit of serendipity. And finally, as I am the first player, I have one good in my cart here. It's a book. And right now, books are the most valuable thing in the game. As you can see, they are worth five bucks. You can't even buy them. They are so rare. And I've got one. Now, my opponent over here, you'll notice, does not have a cart. That's because I'm doing a solo run through today going up against the Trader. Uh, which is an automated enemy that has a deck of cards. It basically means the Trader does everything a player does in regular play, just that they make their decisions based on these cards. So the trader has their own passenger, uh, their own starting cash, their own objective, although they never actually care what they are, they're just worth flat points. Um, the only thing a trader doesn't have is their own horse and their own horseshoe. They they get around some other way, I guess. So anyway, uh, it's me versus the solo. And uh, the last thing is, we all start here in town on this central rondelle and... I should say that uh, today, my prototype did not come with meeples to represent our little wagons that go around town. So I'm using a couple of my lovely uh, glass markers that my wife has made. Oh, they're just adorable. Cute little owls for the dark road. This is me. This is the trader. Actually, before I filmed, Jen said, well, hey, what do you want? Look, we can have kitty cats or dinosaurs or little googly-eyed monsters or all kinds of stuff or even cute penguins. I almost went with the penguins, but somehow the owls seemed more appropriate. Just look at them, staring at me, looking down upon me, and saying, you better get this right, pal. I will do my best. But anyway, folks, we are set up, ready to go. I am the first player. Now, how does it work? Well, as I said, I've got three dice, a one, a two, and a three queued up. And I'm going to use one of these dice to move one, two, or three spaces on the town rondelle. If I use this three, I would go one, two, three. Three. And then that means I have access either to making an excursion or going to the dark market. If I use my two die, I'd go one, two, and I would have access to the excursions or the commissions. And finally, if I use the number one die, I'm just going to move one step, which gives me access to the Great Bazaar or the um, Queen's Commission. So I've got to pick one of those things, and whichever die I pick is going to determine what I'm going to be able to do this round. So... What do I want? I think, I think I will start out, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to move one space on the rondelle. Now what that means is, I take this and I move it up here. And this is a reminder that I'm going to move one space on the rondelle. But this space that just emptied out, I now have to put a new die in here from my supply. So if I put another one here, then that basically means I am setting myself up for a future turn where I'll only move one. But if I put the three here, I'm setting myself up for a future turn when I will do three actions on the rondelle, or move three spaces on the rondelle. So, um, every turn, you're making a short-term decision of how far do you want to move on the rondelle, but you're also doing future programming for how far you'll be able to move on the rondelle. 
And you know what? I think I'm gonna do this because there's one other thing. Depending on which die I choose, that means I'll move a certain number of spaces on the rondelle and get access to different things in town. But I will also get access to this action, this action, or this action. I want this action. What this is saying is whatever die I put in here, not only does this mean on a future turn I'll be able to move three steps on the town, rondelle, but I also get to craft a number three item, which according to this little cheat sheet right here, is a staff. So, uh, you know, whereas if I'd put a one over here so that later on I would only move one step, then I would craft a gun. But I'm going to go on ahead and put a three here, which means I am crafting a staff. Hooray! I got it for free, basically, and I can put it wherever I want. You can see I have limited storage space on my little wagon here, and uh, you can always move this stuff around to kind of, you know, squeeze it together. So anyway, now I've got my starting book, and I've got a staff. And so, that's what this die moving into position did. It gave me that staff, but this is the die I really care about. It means I move one step forward. Boop! Okay, and I have arrived at the door of either the Queen's Commission or the Great Bazaar. I get to do one of those actions. And I mark the action I'm going to do by taking this die and putting it here or here. Because, you know, sometimes the actions I do are really simple. Sometimes they're really complex and they require a lot of thought. So, I got to decide, what am I going to do? I think I am going to get a commission. So, I, if I come to this space or this space, I can get a commission. I can have up to three commissions uh, queued up on my little wagon train right there. And those means I've got jobs, things I want to deliver out on the dark road. So, I've got one more decision though. Alright, so, I chose how far I'm going to move on the rondelle. And also, at the same time, chose which bonus I'm going to get. There's these other bonuses, I'll show you how those work later. I've also set up for a future turn, and in the process, also made another item. There's one more thing. Everybody starts with one of these illuminated dice. After I moved this up here... Well, actually, oh no, no, I'm sorry. Because I used this one, I can't use my illuminated die. Instead, I got to forge an item for free. If I had used this die, I would have had the opportunity, if I wanted to, to use my illuminated die and do a double turn, which is very cool. But that means I would have had to move two spaces on the rondelle, which maybe wouldn't have put me where I wanted to go. So, ooh, right. Okay, so anyway, so I moved one, I uh, made a thing, uh, a level three thing. And now, I can either get a commission, and as you can see, there are several. There's a, there's a commission for each type of, each of the towns out on the dark road. Windglass, Northbreak, Nightpoem, Cursecairn, Scorchborn, and Farglin. And these are basically going to be shopping lists. Stuff I have to get into my wagon and then deliver out onto the dark road to one of these towns later on. So, what commission am I going to take? Well, the obvious choice would be I should go on ahead and get a commission to Windglass. Since I'm already planning on delivering this passenger to Windglass, I should take the Windglass job. Especially because the Windglass job says I need to deliver, in a perfect world, armor and two staffs. I've already got a staff. Hmm, so do I want to do that? My other option, I think, would be interesting to me. Well, first of all, remember, I've got this goal that's secret. Only I know that I want to do commissions to Night Poem, Curse Karen, and Windglass. So, Windglass is a no-brainer, uh, but remember, I've got a book. Over at Night Poem, they want books. Yes, they do. They also want musical instruments. Now, why would I choose that when I've already got a passion or wanting to go to Windglass? That is because I care about my opponent as well. Because whenever somebody eventually comes to this space or this space and starts an excursion, you know, basically tries to travel and make a delivery, all players have the opportunity to join. So, if I want to, I can spend a whole turn in one of my dice triggering an expedition and traveling and all that, or I could wait for my opponent to do it, and I could piggyback off of that, uh, that um, trip they're going to make. And that means I would be able to spend my precious dice doing other things. Now, of course, there are definite benefits for being a leader of a caravan that goes out to all these places. But if I'm just going to wait for my opponent here to try to deliver their their passenger, Elif, who wants to go to Night Poem, maybe I should grab this Night Poem one. That's why I'm thinking about it. Because remember, I've got to deliver a Night Poem. I've also got to deliver Curse Cairn. And the thing is, if my opponent decides to go to Night Poem, which is one of the, uh, which is the purple, I can tag along and either go to Night Poem or Curse Cairn. So, so that is interesting. 
I've got a book. Both of these want books, so maybe I should grab one of these and then plan on fulfilling that commission with the book I started with when my opponent eventually goes for a ride. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll, I mean, although Wind Glass is not bad, but I can always, hopefully I'll be able to pick that up later. Because, like I said, this is a rondelle. We are going to go round and round this thing many times over the course of the game. So, uh... Okay, so then what should I choose? What should I choose? Here's an interesting thing. Night Poem wants a book, which I've got. And remember, books are the most expensive thing in the world right now. They cost five bucks. Night Poem also wants musical instruments. Musical instruments are the cheapest thing in the world right now. Right now, they only cost one gold, and I started with five. So if I rush right out there, I can potentially buy a couple. If I, if I say, this is the commission I'm going to take, I've already got the book, and then if I can get over here really quick, then I'll be able to buy two instruments potentially, for one buck. That's pretty nice. Night Poem is my goal, which means sooner or later, when my opponent goes there, I will tag along to deliver my books and hopefully some musical instruments. Phew! Okay, that was my turn. And as you can see, a lot of stuff happens potentially in these turns. And I didn't even show you a double turn because I didn't get to use my Illuminated die. So anyway, this die, which I put over here as a reminder, this is what I was doing. I thought about what I was doing. And now I'm done. This basically just kind of goes into my discard. My I have a discard pile for my dice. Eventually, I will bring these dice back in and add them to my own reserve. But anyway, that was it. Phew! That was a lot. Now, let's see. If I were, there was another human player, they would have their own wagon. They would have three dice to choose from. That means they would move a certain number of steps. But the solo player works slightly differently. They've got their deck of cards that determines what they're going to do every round. So let's see. What is uh, the trader going to do? All right. They are moving down to the inn. All right. So first of all, we from the top to the bottom, this is where they want to move. So it's like they played a one, two, three, four. It's like they played a value four die. So they're going to go... One, two, three, four, and here's where they are. Because we always go clockwise around town, Rondell style. Here's their evil owl. Oh, look at them. All right, so they've come here. And now, um, they, you know, the, the trader does not actually directly do the normal actions. They actually follow the rules of their card. So first of all, upon arrival here, they get a good. All right. And... Interestingly, because they don't have their own wagon with limited storage space, every time the solo player gets a good, they just move this marker up one space on what is normally the fame track. So the um, the the trader I'm up against started with one good, because everybody starts with one good. I started with a book. They started with a generic good. They don't have specifics. And they just got one more. So he's now got two goods in his supply. I've got two goods as well, but I have to actually physically fit them into my little Tetris puzzle over there. Next up, they are going to try to go to the inn if they have four or more goods. If they had enough goods on hand, they would try to sell the goods to one of these folks at the inn and make a lot of money. And that's important. There are two ways to score points in this game. You are trying to make as much money as you can by the end, and you're also trying to earn as much fame as you can by the end. And at the end of the game, whichever of those two numbers is less, that's your final score. So you're always trying to keep your money income and your, your, your money and your fame kind of equal. So anyway, if the dummy player had four or more items, they would now sell some of those items to the folks over here and um, make some money, which is one way to score points. However, remember, like I said, at this early game, they only have two goods. So that means even though they're here and they could have come to the inn, they don't have enough to sell. So instead, they're going to go to the dark market. They ignore this. They do the dark market. And this says, by the way, folks, this is a prototype. So I've had to use a Sharpie on some spaces because, uh, you know, things are being tweaked and adjusted, as is often the case with prototypes. They're going to move one on the dark market rondelle. And they are going to get a, um, a, uh, a, a, what do you call it? A crown card and two fame. This is what they're going to do. So they move once on the rondelle. Now, if they were a regular player, they would move here. And that means they could get a gun plus a piece of armor. But they never actually take. They just move this so it affects me in case I want to come to the dark market. So they, in, instead of taking what this landed on, in this case, this card says they get a, cr they get a crown that scores two fame. Over here... We have got, at all times, two objectives that anybody could grab if they go to the dark market and spend enough money. This one will give them a secret goal, plus two fame points. This one will be a different secret goal, plus one good, 
plus a horseshoe. Now, he, you know, his card says, hey, I want the crown that says, give me two points. So that means he's going to take this. This is a lost opportunity. I could have gotten one victory point, which is the equivalent of getting one dollar and one fame, because it increases my bottom line score, if at the end of the game, I had played a snow bee, uh, you know, or snow bees, ice mouse, ice mice, or... Uh, cave dragons. These are familiars that you can encounter on your travels and make befriend them. So that was saying, hey, you can get points for befriending familiars. Except, uh-uh. He just took it. Just like a player would take this. And also gets two fame. So, gonna move up to one, two, on the fame track. I have no fame. He's already at four fame! And uh, he's got two goods. And he just keeps this. This is basically worth a point to him at the end of the game. Every objective. So, that was his turn. Again, his turns are super simple. You move to where he says on the rondelle, you do what it says on top, and then you check. Hey, which of the two buildings can they interact with, depending on if they've got enough stuff, and then they do it. And so, that was it for the trader. It is my turn. And so, what am I going to do now? Well, I'm either going to move three, two, or three spaces on the rondelle. Which means I'm either going to go one, two and end up here, or I'm going to end up over here. I'm going to end up in one of these two spots. Unless I want to spend my trusty horseshoe. A horseshoe can be spent to either increase or decrease the die value by one. So, let's see here. Now what I want to do is, I want to get around. I mean, I'm having to leave now. If I had a 5, a 5 means moving 5 steps, which would be the equivalent of going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is standing still. Unfortunately, so if I had programmed this here, I could do this now, stand still, and then go shopping at the market. Like, I, like I'm thinking, because I want to buy those instruments while they're cheap. But unfortunately, I put a 3 there, which lets me go 1, 2, 3 which does not get me up to the market. Although, if I use this three or this three, I could also use the um, horseshoe, which would get me over here, one, two, three, four, and then I'd be able to either go to the inn or go to the market, and I'd be able to make my purchases now. So, do I use my horseshoe, my most valuable horseshoe? Because here's the thing, I want to get these musical instruments before my opponent decides to go on a road trip. Because I want to get, you know, I want to get maximum use out of this commission I've gotten. But I don't know what he's going to do, just like I wouldn't know if a regular player. I, you know, my opponent now knows because, hey, I took this commission. They can tell I'm probably planning on piggybacking off of what they're doing. Or alternatively, I might make a trip to Night Poem and they could piggyback off of me. Um, so, if he's in a hurry to make that trip, I had better go. Although, he doesn't have a commission yet. I don't think he makes trips unless he's got commissions. Right. Hmm. So, I think I've got a little bit of time. Which means... Oh. Oh. Which means I... Oh. That's very interesting. I have another interesting plan. Okay. All right. I think he's going to get to piggyback off of me instead. I'm going to trigger this die. Number two. And the, because I have triggered... This central object, I have a choice. Remember, when I triggered this die, hey, I got to forge something. Now that I've triggered this die, I either get a lantern or I get to spend my precious illuminated die. The most valuable thing in the game. These dice which show your way through the darkness. I am going to use this. All right, so I'm not giving myself a lantern, which you can see I've got storage for up to four lanterns. Instead, I'm using my illuminated die. Now, remember, again, I've got to program a future. Am I going to move one space in the future or five spaces? I.e., am I going to try and stand still in the future? Hmm. I think, yeah, I'm going to put that five there. I think that makes sense. Okay, so I'm leaving these ones for later. So, I've made my choice. I am, I've got this die. And I've got my illuminated die, and now that means I've got an extra choice. Remember on my first turn, I had to move exactly what this die said? Now I've got two dice. I can either move two steps, or I can move five steps. My choice. And the illuminated die means um, I get to do two actions at the location instead of just one. Before I had one die, so I got to do one thing. I took a commission. Now I'm going to get to do two things at my final destination. So do I want to use that five, stand still, which means I can go to the bazaar and get another commission, and whenever you use your illuminate die, you also get to visit the um, building that's in that area too. So by doing this, I'm going to get to do three actions. If I go to the quartz mine, I will get a, um, what do you call it? A crystal, 
which is a very useful resource. Our familiars who travel with us, they love crystals, and that's a way to activate all their special powers. Remember, I already have a crystal, though, so I don't think I'm as interested in visiting this. I'm going to go ahead and use this, too. So I've got a 5, I've got a 2, I'm using the 2 to move. I will go 1, 2, and I'm going to stop right there. Remember, I could spend my horseshoe and move 3 if I wanted to get out and visit my buddy, because multiple people can be at the same spot, but I'm going to come right here. And, now normally, I would have to pick. Either go on an excursion, or go to the dark market. My choice, but I get to do both. And also, I get to visit the Frosted Filigree because I used my Illuminated Die. Let's do this first. I can do these three things in any order. This is going to give me a good that costs one in the market. It will give me one fame, and it will give me one lantern. So let's go ahead and get that lantern. Let's get some fame. Hoo -ha! I am on the board. I'm famous for hanging out at the Frosted Filigree. And I get one good that costs one. That means I could get an instrument, or I could get some armor for free right now. And remember, I want instruments because I've got a thing that says instruments. So let's go on ahead. And as you can see, instruments are a pain. They're ginormous. They take up a lot of space. Actually, am I going to have a problem? Can I get two instruments and my book in here? Yes, I can. I'll be able to fit them all. All right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So I got a freebie good. I got some fame and I got a lantern. Nice. That was from this. But now I still get to do these two actions. Next up, Let's go on ahead over to the dark market and do something there. Now, you saw the the uh, my teammate or my opponent go there. They just moved this a certain step and just took whatever they wanted. Me, whenever a player comes to the dark market, you move this forward on the rondelle and you have to pay. You have to pay at least one buck to get into the dark market. So I'm going to pay one. So I started with five. I'm now down to four, which basically means I just lost a point. Remember, well, kind of. If I have less money at the end of the game than fame, I just lost a point. If I have more money than fame, I didn't lose a point because of that whole, you know, how's it all going to work out at the end? But anyway, when you pay, for every dollar you pay to get into the dark market, you move forward one space or clockwise one space. So I moved clockwise one space. This gives me a book and a uh, another staff, which is nice. Because, hey, those books, I could sell them like crazy and make five bucks, i.e. five points. But I'm going to spend an extra buck and move a second time. Because I can pay as much as I want. And because I've made it down here, I get a choice. I can either get any commission I want, so I can grab another commission. I can have up to three on the go. Or I can give... Oops, I forgot. Folks, always watch the Klingon subtitles turn on. A new objective came out. I could grab another objective and let's see, I think I want to grab one of these. So I paid two bucks to get here so that I can have another objective. In addition to making these deliveries, I want to, well, at the end of the game, I will get four bucks if I have delivered three commissions to the same location. Or alternatively, I will get one fame for every unique passenger I deliver back home to where they came from. Or they're called heroes, actually. I like calling them passengers. Because once they're on, they're not heroes anymore. They're just passengers wanting to get back home. So i got to pick one of these two things. Because I visited the dark market. And, um, let's see here. Uh, uh, well, this is interesting. I mean, this kind of conflicts with this. This wants me to make deliveries to multiple places. This wants me to make deliveries to the same. So I think I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go with this one. Uh, so, at the end of the game, now this is secret. I keep it secret. Uh, oh, everybody saw me take it. I'm going to get one fame for every unique class I deliver. Alrighty. So, that is important for when I'm hiring people later on. And, uh, so I'll just keep that to myself. And, because I took this, I also get another bonus. Remember, he took this one, which gave him two fame. I took this one, which gives me a basic good of my choice for free and another horseshoe. Nice. So I'm getting my second horseshoe. And you can only have up to three. This is another update. They're going to actually put like three slots on here to indicate you can have up to three horseshoes and or crystals. So I'm full of horseshoes and crystals now. Um, so I got my horseshoe, which means I can manipulate the dice twice. I've got a crystal, which means I can bribe my familiars. And I get another good of my choosing. You know what my good is going to be? You guessed it. A musical instrument. So I don't have to waste time coming all the way around here to spend money to buy them. I got one for free by getting a new objective at the dark market. Although it did cost me two bucks. Um, right. So anyway, 
So that was that. And let's see. Right. Oh, I think new objectives come out at the end of the round, if I recall correctly. I might be wrong about that, but always cling on subtitles. Okay. No, I think it comes at the end. But I'm not done yet, folks. This was just me visiting the dark market. So with this turn, I got some stuff at the Frosted Frilligree. I got some stuff at the dark market, some very good stuff, and I still got one more die. Now this die cannot visit the dark market again. I've already done this because this is the benefit for get for visiting both. I'm gonna go on an excursion. Okay. Now the die doesn't matter. You know, because I put a two here or a five here, that has no function. The numbers on the dice, once they're up here, they only indicate how far you move on the rondelle. So I am going to do an excursion, which means I've got another choice. I can either go to the nearby ruins and try to find some magic items, or I can actually hit the dark road. I can become a merchant of the dark road and try to make it out to Night Poem or Windglass because I got a customer who wants to go one place. I've got a commission to go to another place. And that's what we're here to do, folks. It's time to hit the dark road. So this is going to be an excursion. I'm going to do in this action. I am traveling, which means there's a nice little summary of how travel works over here. Um, and specifically, the first thing I have to do as the leader of this excursion, because remember, other players can follow me. I have to declare, where am I going? Um, and, so this is interesting. I could go to Night Poem. Now, I want to go to Night Poem because I've got the two instruments and the books that I want to deliver. And I'm also out of space. If I don't deliver these things, I'm running out of space in my wagon. Although, one more step, I could come over here and sell all this stuff to these heroes. But I'm planning on selling to stuff later. Because I'm, I'm planning on holding on to this staff, um, which is worth two bucks. So I'll be able to sell that and make two bucks later on. Right now, I am declaring it's Night Poem. Night Poem, everybody! Here's where I'm going. And now... Um, I also have to declare whether I am traveling on the dark road or whether I'm going to take a dangerous shortcut. Now, you're not allowed to take a shortcut unless you've got at least three lanterns. It's a, you know, there's the dark road and then there's the really dark road. I only have one lantern. So even if I wanted to do the more treacherous path, which has greater rewards, I can't because I don't have enough lanterns to light the way. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take a trip on the dark road and I'm declaring that I'm going to Night Poem, and now all other players get to declare, I'm staying home, or I'm coming with you. Because they might have passengers, and they might have commissions of their own that they want to. And remember, just because I'm going to Night Poem, anybody who joins me can go to Night Poem or Curse Cairn, because they're close enough. They're both the two purple, as opposed to the two green or the two blue. And, of course, my opponent says, well, hey, I've got a passenger to go to Night Poem. They're going to join me. Okay, so... Oh, oh, one more thing. Actually, before everybody decides they're joined, I have to declare which of these familiars I will um, encounter on the road and who will join me in my travels. So I have to make that choice as well. There is a Snowbee, a Cave Dragon, and a Thray Cat. I think... And see, they all give me access to different special powers if I bribe them with my crystals, which I have one. So do I want the Snowbee to join me? Because, hey, he can give me another hero as a passenger. Or he can give me all a magic item. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Snowbee, you're coming with me. So the full process is I declare where I'm going. I declare what familiar is coming with me. So the Snowbee joins Whisper on my magical caravan. And I declare whether I'm going or not. And everybody else decides whether they're going to come along on the dark road. Anyway, because the Snowbee is coming along, whichever familiar is um, furthest along on the route, they will actively help us face the challenges ahead. If I took the Cave Dragon or the Cat, there I wouldn't get this die, which will help on the trip. So that's one of the reasons I took the Snowbee, because the Snowbee is definitely going to help out. Um, so wh whoever travels generates a travel die. The Snowbee is giving us a die. I'm giving a die, and because the trader has somebody who wants to go, the trader is going to join me. They're providing a die. So we are going to roll three travel dice to determine what happens on the way to Night Poem. So let's find out, shall we? And as you can see, the game comes with big old decks of different little story snippets. Today, we had a deserter. He claims he had a good reason for abandoning the caravan, and now... Uh, only, uh, you know, only we can deliver his message. So we ran into a deserter from another caravan, and you can see 
bad things or good things can happen based on how we deal with this deserter. And that's where the dice come in. We are going to roll. Because I am the leader, I will get first dibs on the dice that come out. And then other players, you know, in turn order would get to go as well. And uh, you always want to roll high because that means you get stuff. If you roll low, you lose stuff. You might lose some fame because you treated that deserter very badly. Or you might get some fame, a, a free commission um, for treating him so well, etc., etc. So let's roll them bones. And what do we got? We got a two, a four, and a four. All right. So you can see why having the snow bee come along was a good thing because um, you know it means you're rolling more dice. There's a better chance of getting a good result. Now four ain't bad. I could take a four, and that means I would get to um, run into the oracle. The oracle is a die. If we visit the oracle of Lumai, you get to roll this and get some bonuses. I could use that four, and it's like I ran into the oracle on the road. I guess maybe the oracle was a deserter, or the deserter uh, had some oracle-like powers. Um, and that would be either with a 4 or a 5. Now, unfortunately, my special power, Whisper's special power is, I can add one to my travel die. So I could take that 4 and turn it into a 5. But that's no good. If I could turn it into a 6, though, I would totally do that because I'd be able to get another commission for free. And spending a whole turn just to go get a commission, that's kind of painful. It's always nice when you can just pick up commission on the go. And let's see, uh, let's see, these symbols are the commissions for Northbreak and uh, Farglen. Although, unfortunately, neither of those are towns I want to visit. I want to go to Windglass and Nightpoem and Cursecairn. So, here's the deal. If I was really desperate and I wanted to use my power to turn a 5 into a 6 so I could get a free commission, I do have an option. There are two uses for lanterns. One is, if you've got three of them, you could go on the more dangerous route, where, the, where you're much more likely to get bad results from your encounters. But, um, when it comes time for you to take a die, and you don't like the dice that are available, you can spend a lantern and re-roll all of them. So if I wanted, I, here's the thing, I'm not happy with this result. I would have rather had a 5 so I could turn it into a 6. And I would have rather everything else had been really low so my opponent would have been stuck with a crappy die. So I think I am going to do it. I'm going to spend this lantern and reroll. I have to reroll everything. I can't be selective. And now I just want to see one high value dice and a bunch of low value dice here. Let's see what we got. Alrighty, we've got a 3, a 1, and a 2. That's not what I wanted, but still, I am happy with this because... I am going to take the three. As the leader, I take the three, and good old Whisper turns this three into a four, which means I get to visit from the Oracle after all. Hooray! Thanks, Snow Bee, for helping me out with that. Okay. Um, oh, oh, oh. You know what? I, one more thing, folks. This game is big. There is so much going on. These turns are so combo-laden. Um, I took the Snow Bee, but I forgot. When I got him, I remember I have a crystal. I want to use this crystal and bribe him to get one of his two bonuses. The two bonuses I could get would be getting a hero or a magic item of my choice. I'm going to have bribed him to have gotten a magic item. I want another book, but not a regular book like what I started with, a magic book. You can see the little filigree on the outside and they're, they're kind of golden. So I've got... So, I picked up the snow bee, I gave him a magic crystal, so he gave me a magic book. He also gave me a die to help with the roll. Then, um, everybody joined me, we ran into the deserter, I um, tried rolling, I didn't like what I got, I spent a lantern to look into the darkness, I ended up with a three, Whisper turned the three into a four, and now finally, I get to visit the oracle. Let's see, show me what you got, oracle. Woo! I get two lanterns, alright! So this trip is paying for itself. Nice. Okay, so that die was gone. This is the one I took. Now, everybody else who came along on this trip in turn order would take from the remaining dice, and the, uh, the trader, the solo player, will always take the best one, so he's going to take a two, which means, well, if he'd had to take the one, he would have lost two fame. Instead, um, he is taking a two or three means we either have to downgrade a magic item to a regular item, or if you don't have any regular items, you have to lose an item. So he just lost. He doesn't. He doesn't have a concept of magic items. I'm carrying a regular and a magic book. If this bad thing had happened to me, I'd have to downgrade my my magic to a regular. He just loses an item. So he had to. He is now down to one item. The item. Remember, he got that bonus one, but he just lost it um, because he did not deal with this deserter very well. 
All right. And um, the snow bee takes back the other die. Or I should say, after we took the snow bee, um, or I should say, at the end of the turn, when this refills, uh, a new one will come out, and the cave dragon will now become the familiar that if he joins you, you get an extra die when you go on the excursion. So, phew, we ain't done yet, folks. There's a lot going on in this game, as you can see. So, to recap. I declared, I got a follower, I used the follower ability, um, we had an encounter, it went well for me, it went very bad for the other members of my caravan who decided, and now we have finally arrived at Night Poem. Phew! And we now make good. And everybody can do this part simultaneously. Remember, um, you know, other players could be going to Night Poem or Curse Cairn to fulfill contracts or deliver their passengers, you know, heroes they picked up along the way. I cannot deliver Olvero. He came along for the ride and he does not get to go home because we're over here. I'll have to deliver him another day. Sorry, pal. You're just going to stick with me. But I'm going to complete my Night Poem, which means, uh, what did they want? They wanted, uh, I've got exactly what they wanted. They wanted two musical instruments and they wanted a book. Now, I've got a regular book and a magic book. I'm going to deliver the magic book. Okay, boom. Because I have fulfilled all three steps of this contract, or this commission that I've got, the two musical instruments and the book, I get six fame. Plus, for every magic thing I delivered, I get one additional fame. So I'm actually going to get seven fame off of this trip. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. So, I'm now the most famous one around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm the orange player. Uh, this is uh, him. He's the red player. He's a bit less famous than me, and he's got one good. All right, so uh, now I'm dumping all these. They're done. And uh, all righty. So that's pretty cool. And remember, fame could be my high score, or money could be my high score, depending on whichever is the lower of the two. So I want to keep on making money, and I want to keep on um, delivering stuff to the boondocks. I'm done with Night Poem. Now, also, if I had had... Let's see, were there any? If I had had Mervyn along for the ride, who wants to go to Night Poem, I could have delivered Mervyn as well, and I would have gotten one additional fame and one additional dollar for taking Mervyn home. Unfortunately, Mervyn, you didn't... You missed the boat, pal. So, I don't get that bonus. This is a reminder. Hey, get whatever bonus you should get based on the heroes you delivered, and get however many fame you should get based on, you know, how, how well you completed your commissions. So that is done. I could have had three commissions and fulfilled them all and gotten a ton of fame. You never know. But anyway, so this commission is done. Now, I do keep this because remember, at the end of the game, I have to prove to everybody that I successfully completed a um, commission to Night Poem. So you keep track of everything you've delivered over the course of the game. It just kind of goes into your future score pile. Oh, by the way, I should say, money is secret. Everybody gets... Uh, a, a purse, a coin purse, so we can keep our cash. Everybody can see how famous everybody is, so that information is public, but nobody knows how much money anybody has. So it's still a surprise at the end of the game when everybody opens their coin purse and reveals how much money they've got, because maybe that's their score, or maybe the fame is the score. Um, since I'm playing by myself, I'm just not bothering uh, with that right now. But even the dummy player, I'm not supposed to know exactly how much money he has. So anyway, I had no people. I did have a commission. I've delivered that. I got a bunch of stuff. Meanwhile... Um, good old trader here, he got Elif back home. Elif gave him two fame right from the get-go for signing up, and now Elif has come home, and that means the trader gets one fame, boop, and one more coin. All right. And didn't have to waste time doing it. Got to piggyback off of me. Okay. And now there's one more step arguably the most important step. And this is only for the leader of the caravan. Remember, it's a huge benefit to anticipate where other players are going to go and then piggyback off of them so you can make deliveries and score points and, and all kinds of things without having to waste your precious actions. But it's great to be the leader as well because only the leader gets a bonus. I was the leader. So I get to take... Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I get to get another illuminated die. I can take another... Maybe these were supposed to refill automatically. Or I could take three bucks. Oh, and I forgot. By the way, as part of setup, there's supposed to be a fiver here. The first player, whoever, as their leader bonus takes money, they get five. And then subsequently after that, they get three. 
So I could take five bucks. I could get another secret goal. I could get another illuminated die, which is what I'm inclined towards because they let me do double turns. Or I could take this. Now, in a multiplayer game, there are actually four of these. These are upgrades that will permanently give you a better power for the rest of the game. Either guaranteed two victory points at the end of the game, or they upgrade one of these actions. And everybody can have one of these upgrades. In a solo game, though, only one of them is available. This is the one that came out randomly. So, really, I don't think I need the money right now. I might go for it later. I already grabbed another uh, secret uh, crown goal. I either want to get another illuminated die so I can do another double turn, like what you just saw, how powerful it was, or I want to permanently upgrade this ability. Because remember, when I first did this and I put a die here, that meant I got to make an item. Now on, whenever I put dice here, I make magic items instead. So, that's a pretty big deal. Do I? And, and that'd be for the rest of the game. I will get to start making magic items for free. And so I can take that or I can take the other illuminated die. I think I want the illuminated die more because I like bonus turns. It gives me more flexibility with the dice. It lets me do other stuff. I roll this. I've got a five in the queue. And I've still got two items after I am done. Phew! That was a big move, folks. But hey, this is... And the nice thing is, even though these are big moves, generally speaking, most players get to partake because you're always paying attention to where other players are going and you're always trying to make sure that, hey, if somebody else goes, I get to tag along because it'd be a missed opportunity not to. So that was my second turn of the game, if you can believe it. But already, I've uh, fulfilled commissions, I've visited the dark market, I've gone on an epic quest and run into deserters, I've consulted an oracle, and I've got two secret goals now. I've still got a friendly snow bee who will, once I get another crystal, I'll be able to use him to grab any hero I want. I've still got another hero waiting to go home to another place. And folks, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now, if you would like to watch a little bit more, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen, and heck, I'll continue to do an extended playthrough. We'll play even further. Or you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.